Hey everyone, and welcome to part 14 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. Now I am going to warn for this tutorial that it's going to be a lengthy one, most likely, because there is a lot of stuff to cover in this, and I will probably be breaking this into two parts, even though um, I usually cover one thing per, per tutorial, it may extend longer into the next one just to cover one thing. So what we're going to be dealing with in this tutorial is enemy generation. Now it's going to be a little mo bit more confusing because what we're doing is we are taking a monster depending on what region you are in. So if we're in this region or that region, there's going to be different monsters that spawn. Now within our all monsters array, we have to keep track of you know which monsters are in each region, what rarity they are, and spawn ones according to what rarity or chance that they may spawn. So it's going to get a little bit confusing. Hopefully I can explain it well enough for everyone to follow along fine. Um, there's going to be a couple of things that we need to change up to get to this to work. But the good thing is I pre-coded a lot of this. So, you know, we won't be going, or the tutorial will hopefully not take as long as I think it's going to take. But we'll go and jump into the code. And I'll start explaining stuff that you need to set up or what we're going to be changing. First, in our monster class, we're going to be adding a couple of things, just two things. Uh, rarity, and that'll be of type rarity. So down here, you're going to have to create a different or brand new enum. And we'll be using common and rare. So pretty much when we go and we discover a Pokemon, we want to determine whether that Pokemon is either common or rare, depending on which one. So if we roll a rare number, it'll pick from rare monsters. If we roll a very common number or any other number, um, we'll be choosing a common Pokemon out of that list. And then we need region located. So depending on what region the Pokemon is located and what region you're currently in, it'll be grabbing different monsters depending on that variable. So with this region located, we are going to need to actually go and change something real quick. Because you, if you see, we're going to be changing it to a string. This later on is so we can actually change up the variable to be a name of a town or something like that, or a name of an area. And also we may be converting this to an enum later, so it's easy to keep track of all the towns and caves and different stuff like that much more easily. So we want to jump back into player stats and go to your region variable that we made in previous tutorials. So I just renamed it region and I made it a string. Like I said, this may change later, but for now, we're just going to keep it out of string to make it easier to keep track of. Next thing you're going to want to do is put this into your start function, because we want to start at region 1, and since this isn't an int, it'll be just saying, or it'll need some kind of string to plug in. So we're going to plug in region 1 for that. Then what you want to do is scroll down here, and you actually want to change your, up your tag system so that when you go to the certain region, you want region set to, you know, region 1, region 2, and then I believe, yes, I changed it for um, entering and leaving the cave, so you'll need to change that up too. So any piece of code that's not, that has region set for a number needs to be strings now. And so that should be it for these two pieces of code, and now we can actually code our main. Now you can ignore a lot of this text, it's just me um, preparing for other tutorials and stuff. But if you followed the previous tutorials, you have these set up here. Now there's going to be something new that we're going to need to add, and that's going to be import system collections generic. And what this will allow us to do is to use list. And I don't know about C Sharp if you guys need this, I don't think you do. But for JavaScript, you're going to need this for... Um, let's see down here, this piece of code we're going to be using. So, I think that is it for that. So you just need to add that to the top. And then we can go down to our update. I just am using R to test this. Or you can activate this piece of code when we enter a battle. But that's why this is going to be extended. We'll be doing that later. Not going to be worrying about that now. We just need some way to easily test this code. So I'm going to be using the R key to call this function. Now, I'm going to explain this function just a little bit. Um, pretty much what it does is it does what I kind of said earlier. 
is randomize which Pokemon we are going to be encountering or which monster we're going to be encountering. So, in order to do this, we need to roll a random at first. And if that random is a rare number, so let's say we roll 0 out of 100, we want to tell, or let's say that the number, like we're using for example 20, is that special number that rolls it or spawns a rare Pokemon. So we're going to be using that and that. So if it rolls a 20, it'll spawn a rare Pokemon. If it doesn't, then we're going to spawn a common Pokemon. Now you can have multiple like monsters in each area. So you could have like seven common and maybe three rare monsters. And so yeah, that's what we're going to be using. So I'll be going through this code and explaining that a little bit more, hopefully not taking up too much time of explanation. For one, we are going to be accessing our player stat script in order so we can use, scroll back up here, so we can use region. And region is what we're going to be doing to check, you know, which region we're in, so which Pokemon or monsters we should be spawning. So that's pretty much that piece of code. That's all we're going to be using that for, just to access this script and that variable. And now we're also going to create a variable for temp monsters. Now, if you guys haven't used a list before, what a list does is it can take, unlike an array, you need to define how many objects are in an array to begin with. So if you want to add something to an array, you need to list like, okay, I want 10 objects in here. So if you want to add more, you have to specify, you know, I want 15 objects in here and change it that way. With a list, we can add and remove items and the list will change in size. So just imagine this like a grocery list. Um, if you add, you know, five items, your grocery list will be five. If you add, you know, five more, it'll be 10 now. And then if you take away like seven, it'll be down to three. So it adjusts to, you know, how many you're adding or taking away. So that's a good thing about lists. And then we're also going to have to create another variable for random num, a random number. And that'll be of, a, of type int. And we'll be doing a random dot range. And this will be randomizing whether we should get a rare or common monster. So if when we roll that number, we want to check if that number is 20. And you could set it for something else. It could be random number is like less than 20 or greater than zero, so it's in between, just so you can have some more numbers to work with. 20 is a very low number, and we're probably never going to get that for a long, long time. So you want to adjust it accordingly to, you know, change that to be somewhat fair. And then in here, we are going to be using a for loop. So if you haven't used a for loop before, what it does is it goes through everything that we have or this one's going to be going through everything we have in our all monsters. So our all monsters variable or array contains all of our monsters that we created. So dot length is just, you know, how many are in there and it'll loop through and it'll check each one. And what we're going to be doing with this is actually checking each one in there and we're going to be checking if all monsters I, so whatever one we are on, so this will increase when it goes through so it'll change 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. until we have them all covered. And for each one of those monsters, it'll be checking its rarity. So if it's equal equal to rarity.rare, so the variable and the enum for rare, and and that all monsters region located equals other.region. So if that monster that we ch we are checking is in the correct region that we are, then we want to add them to this. Now what this is is just adding it to this list that we created up here. So if that monster that we're checking in our all monsters fits the description of both these or equals both of these, then we want to add them to our temp monsters. And we're going to be using this in a little bit to do something else to actually grab a monster that we want out of there. So it's going to be, so if we roll the rare, it's only going to grab rare monsters and monsters located in our current region and add them to there. Now else, if we don't roll a random number, we want a common monster, so monsters that generally spawn. And we're going to be doing the same for loop, 
The only difference is we're using a j variable. You do have to change up the variables for this. And we're going to be going through all monsters again. So either it's going to go through and check for rarity.rare or rarity.common. So if it's common, it's going to search for that. It's still going to check for the same region. Nothing's different, and it's just going to add to our temp monsters for those, for J. And so after we're done doing either one of those, done looping through, we're going to call our last piece of code. Now we're going to create a new random, and this will be random.range. And we're going to start at zero, and we're going to do temp monsters.count. So all the monsters we added from each one of these, or either one of these, so we're going to probably have a list of different monsters that are going to get added to temp monsters. And once we have our list of all the monsters that fit that criteria, we want to roll a random from zero to how many are in, you know, that list. So it could be rolling zero through five, and it'll pick one randomly through there. And what we want to do is we want to take our enemy monster variable. So this is the one we're going to be fighting. And we want to add temp monsters that new random. So it's only adding one from our temp monsters. So that is the basic math behind calculating, you know, what monster we should grab out of there. It's actually pretty basic. If you guys don't understand coding, it might be a little bit tricky. But rarity.rare, if you don't know, is just, you know, rarity, our class, and dot rare. And that's how we grab it. So, after all that explanation, hopefully people aren't too lost, we're going to go test this out. You can click on game and maximize it, and we can select our main so we can keep track of our stuff. Now, I must also state that you can change the rarity for each monster that you create, and in region you can type region 1 or whatever region that you're currently in. And that'll equal to this region um, when you go to check for it. So I did this for a couple of monsters. And we can close that. And now here's our enemy monster. It is completely blank. There is nothing here. And we want to randomize this of which one we encounter. So we're going to jump in here. So walk around. Now every time I press R, you can see that we got a monster here. So we got monster 5, 2, Two, five, two, five, two. Keep spamming. Now we got four. And it's going to go through those three. The reason it's going to just go through those three is because monster one is set to a rare and monster three is set to a rare. So it has like a 1% chance to actually, you know, grab. First, it has a 1% chance of getting a rare monster. And then it's got um, however many rare monsters you have it's going to, you know, calculate, it's going to grab one of those. So it could be even lower chance. You could never, you know, run into one ever. So that's the basics behind this. So I'm going to be cutting off this tutorial since it's probably long. Um, we'll, we will be covering a couple more things with this in order to actually get this to work properly. We're going to be going into battle and we're going to be displaying these stats on screen and we're also going to have to set up a lot of other things with this monster to work properly, such as attacks and whatnot. But that'll be for later, so stay tuned, guys.